Welcome everyone to another edition of Play It Through, and on this edition it's Maru's Mission, brought to us by Jaleco. Part of the Jaja Maru series in Japan featuring a ninja boy taking on various different enemies in different games, released for the Famicom, handhelds, and even arcade, Maru's Mission is one of the few games in the series to be brought over to North America. And when they did so, you can see they had some liberties with the box art, really changing it from a ninja to just some random kid trying to save his girlfriend. Whereas you can see on the Japanese box art, you are clearly a ninja, and in-game we'll be playing the North American version, and even in the game, your sprite is still obviously a ninja. The game features six worlds broken up into two areas each, where each area has a mini-boss for the first half, and then the final boss at the end of the level. While not the most memorable game for the Game Boy, Martyr's Mission I still had a lot of fun with as a kid. So here we go with Martyr's Mission for the Nintendo Game Boy. After starting up the game, you get a little brief storyline before you jump into the first level. The first level of the game takes place in North America in a random forest and we'll be taking on the boss known as Insector. I like the way they actually introduce the boss that you'll be fighting at the end of the level at the beginning of each stage. In Maru's mission, your main attack is going to be a throwing star that you're going to launch at most enemies. There's different power-ups you can pick up along the way, including getting a nice little teleport that I received early on that instantly warps you to a halfway point. Don't worry, I won't be getting these through most of the game, but sometimes they're just unavoidable. Here we face off with the first mini-boss of the game, known as Iclop, and they actually do a nice job of having a little bit of dialogue between Maru and the boss you'll be facing. Your health meter in the game is represented actually by a number, similar to games like Metroid and Dragon Power. When that meter reaches down to the number zero, you end up getting a game over, so your goal of course is going to be able to keep it as high as possible, and I think you can go all the way up to 999. For this first boss, his main attack is going to be a laser that rotates around the room. It can be a little bit difficult to avoid. You won't be able to attack Iclop either when his eye is actually closed, so you'll have to wait for the opportunity when he opens up in order to throw out some of those throwing stars. They do a nice little effect here where it actually will turn black in the background so you can't really see what's going on, and then it does a nice strobe effect when he does his big giant laser that goes around the room. Of course, I'm very much reminded of Krako from the Kirby series when I fight this boss. After defeating bosses, you'll get sometimes a special weapon. You can then use the special weapon at any time by pressing the select button, and it's mainly used to take out the bosses. The weirdest thing about the game is the jumping. When you jump in the air, of course, you do a normal jump and you kind of float for a little bit. But if you actually hold down after doing a jump, you actually can keep rising. And this will allow you to kind of float over and fly over enemies. 
It takes a little bit to get used to, but it actually ends up being pretty useful, especially when you get to different areas of the game with a lot tougher enemies. There's a few different power-ups you can get up in the game that will launch special attacks, such as the little item I picked up that causes all these fireballs coming out of the left wall and take out almost any enemy that gets in my way. Picking up a little spirit that the enemy drops after defeating them will of course give you a little bit more health. Picking all these up as much as possible will definitely help out because later enemies can drain your health rather quickly. When we reach over here you'll see a whole bunch of bugs come out. This is now time for the boss battle against Insector. As you probably already guessed with Insector, he'll actually break apart into all these little bugs, and you won't be able to hurt him during this. Be sure to press the select button in order to get out the special weapon to use against him. You'll have to wait for a little bit as the bugs all break apart and they cover up a decent amount of the screen, but thankfully you have a large enough area to kind of back away from him in order to avoid running into those bugs. As soon as he reforms though, immediately launch those attacks at him, you'll only get a few in, but you'll do some decent damage to him. Just repeat the process over and over again, avoiding as many of the bugs as possible so you don't get your health drained, and this boss ends up being a cinch. After defeating a boss, a whole lot of the spirits come out, so be sure to grab as many as you can before you get to the next cutscene. The next level of the game is Romania, but along the way you'll have to deal with a little mini stage inside the water. In the water, your controls are a little bit different as you'll be able to actually float up and down and swim. In this stage, you'll actually be battling sharks, and you have a harpoon gun to help you out. There's also a manta ray to take out, and you'll have to take out all the enemies in order to continue in the game. The best opportunity is waiting on the right side so that when the sharks come sweeping down, you'll have a big opportunity to launch some of the harpoons at them. It takes three or four harpoons to actually defeat one of the sharks, and there's usually three or four in each of these areas, as you'll have to do this a few times in the game. The second level of the game takes place in Romania, and we'll be taking on Dracula at the end of the level. Now, most of the enemies in this level, you have a weird chimera that when you actually attack it, it actually breaks up into all three parts that actually make up a chimera, which is actually a cool little effect, as well as you have a Frankenstein monster that's wandering about. Here I'm using the bomb weapon that you can see actually does a pretty good amount of damage because the explosion that comes out of the bomb actually hits enemies pretty far away from it. Just sometimes aiming it so you actually can hit enemies at certain spots can be a little bit tricky, but you can get used to it. The bomb is really effective though on those chimeras because it likes to actually destroy every piece of the chimera once it breaks apart so you don't have all the little pieces trying to attack you. Over here to the right though, you'll see all these little wolves start coming onto the screen. Use your bombs to try to keep some of them at bay. And after a little bit, the Wolfman will actually make his appearance. He'll jump to the bottom of the screen, you'll have a little cutscene before the fight.
The Wolfman is rather simple, we use our shurikens to just keep firing at him non-stop. When he opens up his mouth wide, going for a big bite on you, that's actually when you can do damage to him. Just keep backing away from him for a while and keep firing all of those throwing stars directly into his mouth. When he gets too close to you, he'll eventually fall down to the platform below. You just jump over him and continue going now backwards on that same platform. Eventually, you'll keep firing and he'll break up into two separate forms. Once he breaks up though into two forms, there's only a few more stars you'll have to throw at him in order to actually defeat him. He'll explode, and we move on to the second part of the level. The second area of stage takes place inside of a cemetery. You'll have the same enemies to deal with here that we dealt with in the first part. Here I end up getting the power-up that's actually a little vehicle. I'm not sure exactly how this works, but you seem to be a little bit heavier with your jumps, and you're actually able to just run over a lot of the enemies while you actually have the vehicle. Thankfully, a lot of this area is pretty wide open, so you'll have plenty of space to take out most of the creatures. Eventually, when you make it over here to these three gravestones, Dracula will appear. When the fight begins against Dracula, he'll come forward and actually break up into all these little bats. Select the weapon, which as you can see is actually a big piece of garlic that you now use as a projectile weapon. Run to the far left or right side of the screen and do your best to avoid the bats as they're going to chase you in a bit different line snake-like formation. It'll take a little while, but eventually he will reform for you actually able to attack him, and thankfully it doesn't take too many hits to actually defeat him. Once he's taken care of, he'll explode just like the other one, collect some of the power-ups that you can, and then we'll move on to stage number three. Phase number 3 takes place in Greece, and you'll be fighting Medusa as the actual boss of this level. One other interesting thing about this level is you actually can walk along the ceiling as well, so that changes up some of the ways you may go after certain enemies. It's also a good way to avoid a lot of the enemies that are just walking along the ground. One of the enemies that you fire at will actually break apart and then reform after a few seconds, but thankfully when they do break apart, you should have enough time to actually bypass them and get past where they were. When you make it to here, it's time to battle the mini-boss for this level. The golem actually will come at you from the right side and actually turn into a ball and start bouncing around the room. When this happens, jump up to the platform over here to the left and you'll be able to avoid most of the attacks of it. Eventually he'll start floating up into the air and you won't be able to do any damage to him while he's in his ball form. 
he'll then consistently fire out a whole lot of projectiles. If you get him to fire at this point, you'll actually be able to run underneath of him over to the right side of the screen and avoid most of the projectiles he fires out. After finally doing that, he'll float slowly back to the ground and finally reform so you actually can attack him again. Attack him as quickly as possible to defeat him before he's able to go back into his ball form and then move on to the second half of the level. The second half of the level adds some fire pits for you to deal with as well, so you want to make sure that you avoid them at all costs. There is a lot of enemies, especially in these small corridors, so walking along the ceiling may not necessarily be a bad idea. Just keep firing your throwing stars though to take out any enemy as soon as they actually appear from the right side of the screen. If you've been building up your health through the other levels, you should have a decent amount of health at this point in the game, and you should be able to actually walk through some enemies, if need be, when they get too many on screen. When we make it over to the right, Medusa will make her appearance. For the battle against Medusa, she'll start off by making a screen flash and then launch out her snake at you all the way across the screen. Just stay on the ground level and actually go over your head when she tries to stretch it out at you. She then fires some rings at you. Use the special weapon we got, which is a shield, in order to block those rings and send them back towards her. This is how you actually do damage to Medusa in this fight. Because of this, and being the only way you can actually hurt her, this battle will take a little bit of time to actually get through, but it's really not necessarily too tough. She will sometimes also launch out a lot of little snake enemies to deal with as well, but as long as they don't hit you, they'll actually go off screen. After you've collected enough of the rings back at her, you defeat her, grab some health, and move on to stage number four. Stage number 4 takes place in Egypt, and the final boss for this level is going to be Isis. The main enemy of this level will attack you in groups, so keep firing those throwing stars whenever one appears because there will be a whole bunch of lines of them coming at you. The mummy enemies will actually try to attack you with their bandages, so be sure to actually avoid their attack and then hit some throwing stars at them. 
One of the weird attacks I get here is this weird multiple weapon that allows you to actually get a whole line of you and circle around your body, taking out all enemies in a circular pattern. It's definitely one of the weirdest power-ups or weapons that you can find in the game, but it's very effective for this level. You can also use it to collect large amounts of health that is scattered around the screen as well. Over to the right though, it's time to battle the Sphinx. During the Sphinx conversation, you'll actually have to answer a couple of riddles. If you answer the riddle correctly, you won't do any battle with the Sphinx and actually move on to the second half of the level. Here I got another new power-up. This weapon will actually run around the screen taking out all enemies that it sees, and then actually return, you can just keep using it over and over again to take out all enemies. This ends up working really effective for the large group of enemies that attack you, and then once you've defeated them, of course, grab a little bit of health so you can keep building up that number. Just a little bit to the right, though, it'll be time to battle Isis. Jump up to this upper platform and start throwing throwing stars at Isis. Its main projectile weapon will be a large amount of rocks it sends out in all directions. So these are most likely going to hit you if you're really close to it. Then it will actually use the same beam that Iclop used in the first level of the game. And when it does this, just stand on the platform I level with it and keep throwing throwing stars. You'll defeat Isis in no time and move on to the next level. On the way to the next level, you'll once again have to sink underwater and deal with some more sharks. This whole stage is pretty much like the last time, but the sharks move in a wave-like pattern, so it's a little bit tougher to actually dodge them while trying to get in your harpoon shots, and some of them will actually probably cause you some damage this time around. Make sure you take out all the sharks and the manta ray, and once you're able to do so, you'll move on to the next level. 
This level takes place in Brazil, and Calbelos is the name of the boss for this level. The first part of the stage takes place in a mountain-like area. You'll have these large dragon-like creatures that will try to come at you, as well as this weird snake-like enemy that will also come running really quickly along the screen. Just move a little bit slowly, and if any of them run into you, the snake-like enemies will actually explode, and you'll actually have a good opportunity to take out the dragons. Thankfully, we have a decent amount of health, and they do of course drop health when you defeat them as well. If you have an item like the bomb weapon that we got now, it'll definitely come in handy against some of these enemies. The only annoying thing about this level is, every so often the screen will actually stop scrolling for a second and you'll have to defeat the dragon in order to continue along. The mini boss for this level is the Hydra. For the Hydra fight, it'll slowly bounce back and forth on the far right side, so keep throwing throwing stars at it. Eventually, it'll actually jump down into the pit and come at you on the other side of the screen, and once again, just continue bouncing. This ends up being a rather simple fight for this far into the game, and when you defeat him, collect as much health as you can, and move on to the second half. The second half of the stage, like Romania, takes place inside of a cemetery. You'll have the same two sets of enemies, so just be careful when walking around as a lot of them will probably run directly into you. Thankfully, we have a large amount of health to help us out. If the screen does stop, once again you'll have to take out the dragon enemy before the screen will actually allow you to continue over to the right. Eventually, the Calbellos will actually make its appearance. It's a large fire cat with multiple heads. It'll jump pretty high up in the air and use your special weapon that you got in order to deal a decent amount of damage to you. Every so often, it'll actually stop and fire a large amount of fire straight out of it. Thankfully, the fire only stretches a little bit of the screen, so you should be able to dodge most of it. Just keep firing non-stop, and it will take a lot of hits, but since he likes to bounce so high up on the screen, you'll be able to keep attacking him from below. Once he's defeated, collect the health and move on to the final level of the game. Along our travels, though, to the land of Japan, we once again have to deal with a shark level. They move in pretty much the same pattern they did in just the previous shark level, so it isn't too much more difficult. Stay on the right side of the screen as this is a good opportunity to keep firing out your harpoon gun, and be sure to take out the manta ray as well.
stage number 6, the final level takes place in Japan, and Muramasa is the final boss of the game. The first area of this stage has a lot of pits to deal with, so be very careful of them. You'll also have these Tengu enemies that will try to attack you with their long noses, as well as giant sumo wrestlers that will like to push you around. It's just interesting out of all the Japanese myths, they chose those two only as enemies to face off with in this level. I'm surprised they didn't pick something a little bit more different than a sumo wrestler. When you make it halfway though, it's time to fight Neo. When the battle begins, he'll bounce a little bit and throw some throwing stars, and eventually he'll use his ring-like attack that stretches out far in front of him. This will go back and retract to him, and then he'll throw it out again even farther, so be sure to dodge it twice. Eventually, his head will actually break off from the body. I fire a few more throwing stars at the head of the enemy, and then a large explosion will happen and move on to the second half of the level. The second half of the level has more fire pits to deal with, and the same enemies. Of course, this time around, some of the enemies actually just jump straight into the fire pits. You can also walk along the ceiling to help you out. Walking along the ceiling will be another great way to avoid most of the enemies during this segment. Here we have to deal with another one of the clones of Maru. We saw one in the first level, and when you actually defeat him, he'll explode in a large explosion just like a boss fight. After walking through an entire army of sumo wrestlers, as well as Tengus, it's time for the final boss battle of the game. Stay on the same platform I level with him and throw throwing starts at him non-stop. Every so often he'll actually stop and throw out his sword at you, which can do some pretty decent amount of damage. Do your best to try to get him to throw it into an area that you won't be staying in by doing a little quick jump before he throws it. While he can do a good amount of damage, since there really is no time for him to be invulnerable, you shouldn't have any problem being able to take him out. Once you do so, you can sit back and enjoy the ending to Maru's mission.
So at the end of the game, Maru and his girlfriend are left on this weird island by the turtle, as you can see Mount Fuji it looks like in the background. Eventually the turtle will actually go out into the water and start swimming back and forth as Maru and his girlfriend get closer and then start jumping a little bit. Now there's actually no ending credits to the game as this will just go on forever until you actually end the game. But one weird thing is if you stay on the screen for long enough, the screen will actually turn black and Maru and the girlfriend will actually leave. So overall, while Mario's Mission may not be the most memorable game, and it's part of a long series that most of the games never made it to North America, it's still a fun little experience. You can now see when the screen goes dark, Maru and his girlfriend leave, and that just leaves the turtle moving back and forth in the water. The screen will grow even darker, so all you can see is the outline of the mountain as well as the turtle in the water, and then this just continues on forever. But with that, that's going to wrap up this edition of Play It Through. I'd like to thank you for watching, and of course, I hope you enjoyed.